Hi, I'm Liana Malinowski, and I'm a second grade teacher at Minu School in Carteret, New Jersey. And today I'm going to talk to you about the book, Bob's and Tweet's New Dog in Town. Bob and Tweet's New Dog in Town is about a small group of children who live on Bonefish Street. And the main character, Dean Bob, gets a surprise at his doorstep, and it's a little dog. And for most of the story, they're trying to figure out this mystery of where this dog came from and who his owner is. They eventually figure it out and they realize that the owner can't have the dog with her at the shade, which is the retirement home. So the children advocate to have all of the pets uh, be able to stay with their owners at the shade. And once they uh, propose this change, they actually win and they have the change made and the pets can stay with their owners. And we read this through a read alouds over a few days and Every day they were asking me, so are we going to read it? I want to know what happens next. During the read aloud, uh, we focused on what I call the main three story elements, which are characters, setting, and plot. And this book offered wonderful characters that were very endearing and dynamic. And the students really took to these characters because they were relatable. And especially when you're reading a fiction book, children want to see themselves represented in books or have characters that are relatable. So we focused on finding those moments where we could sort of make that connection with the character. And one of our main uh, reading skills that we focus on is making connections with the book that we're reading. The setting changed frequently throughout the story, which was one of the things I think really kept their interest in it. But also we talked about how story settings change throughout one book. And then when you take that, getting them excited to read that next book in the series, they already started questioning, I wonder how the story is going to change with where it takes place. So we started questioning that and taking some notes. And then finally, the sequence of events. I think as a teacher, one of the things I appreciated most by the author was that the story was a rhyming story. And that helped the students, especially my struggling readers, get through the sequence of events and get through the plot easily and understand what happened in the beginning, the middle, and the end. We often relate rhyming just to poetry. And this was an opportunity for my second graders to see that books and chapter books that that can have rhyming in it. And I have some students that really enjoy rhyming and writing poetry. And now this sort of gave them that inspiration to try out a story and expand their skills and write a story that has rhyming words in it. One of the things um, that we were exploring that we've been using in class all year was Google Jamboard. And we use that as a safe space to share out our ideas and to brainstorm when we were going through the story and we were talking about the sequence of events and the characters, the students were putting sticky notes up on the Jamboard to talk about their ideas, again, for their opinion, should pets be allowed at the shade? And before we got to that chapter, we talk about the element of suspense. They didn't know if the rules were going to be changed or not and if the, the children on Bonefish Street would be successful. So they were really excited to see if their predictions were going to come true. And one of the things that we did as a class activity to connect with writing is we wrote our own pieces about something that we would like to see change. What would we like to see advocated for change? In the story, the children you know, went to the shade and they spoke with the manager, they had signs, they got the whole community involved and they had this whole positive perspective on how they can get the rules changed for the people that were living there. So we turned and talked during our uh, read aloud time about things that we would like to see changed. And my students were very generous with their ideas saying, you know, they would want to see people treat each other with fairness and stop bullying. They would want to see people treat the environment better. So I hope that my students uh, really take away of that. You know, if you really truly believe in something that you want to see it changed, you have the power to do it. And as long as we're working together and we're doing things in a positive way, we can make our voices heard. This is a great book to add to your classroom library for a chapter series book. It will definitely grow your students' love for reading.